Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, want to thank our patrons and everybody that's supporting us. Susan Donahue, thank you. We appreciate you and being a family member for so many years. Everyone, thank you guys so much. Absolutely exclusive videos going up on Patreon um, on a regular basis. And, you know, this post, uh, it... It, it really hits home because you might think, okay, I'm six hours from the coast. I'm good. I don't got to worry about tsunamis and, you know, earthquake-induced tidal waves. Um, when I was in uh, the actual area, I lived in a little town called Clyde, and I remember being out there on uh, the porch there, and it was had just rained and there was just a wee little tremor and then i realized there was a mudslide that happened and it just hit me like mm, you know i'm not going to be able to stay here but the reality is as cindy will point out to me you, you know the only safe place that exists is is in your heart honestly in these times it, anywhere you you live it's going to be a, a challenge um as i have lived in Asheville, charlotte and wilmington um you know beautiful area again and so deep underwater right now people are still going without power and you know some people have have no light at the end of the tunnel really as far as that goes you know when you look at the destruction where Helene uh, came ashore in Florida. It's just insane. It looks like um, a sand flood instead of a mud flood. It's just literally buried cars in sand. Yet here you are, Florida, 119,487 without power. When you uh, look over here to Georgia, you're still over half a million, you know, 572,000 without power. And South Carolina, which hasn't gotten a lot of headlines, 765,000 plus without power. And almost half a million people in North Carolina. The thing is with Western North Carolina here, I mean, we don't know uh, when that's going to come back. There are so many areas here that perhaps uh, I think it'd be safe to say kind of got the worst of everything. Across the border, Tennessee, 14,000 without power. Kentucky, 20,000. Ohio, 33,000. West Virginia, 26. And Virginia, almost 100,000 without power. You know, uh, California, by the way, 10,000 without power at the moment. In these times, we are going to see um, just catastrophic changes. We, we've known this for a long time. We've also talked about in recent videos the fact that you know are we coming out of a seven-year tribulation period or are we just going into a seven-year tribulation period with the signs that are are coming here we are it's the, it's the 30th of september and i'm going long-winded without giving my lovely wife a, uh, the microphone um just i feel a little wound up with um everything that's going on in in this regard we've seen it coming we've felt it coming um and yet here you are it's still shocking when it hits you know um i don't know i'm i i'm i'm wound up too <laughs> i'm wound up too i get it uh we were talking with a lovely family member it was a week or so ago maybe a couple weeks ago and they were really concerned for our safety as have other people have been picking up uh, issues with our safety and they were really advising us to just really lay low and, and not hammer on the controllers and I and I told them I says you know we'll do the best we can but gosh sometimes sometimes something happens and we really cannot hold back because it's so personal for us this is personal we've had the system destroy our loved ones destroy our own lives so when we see the system doing it to other people's we have a bullhorn and we can get on here and we can we can push back some and you guys are helping us do that with your various ways you support us and in, in certain in certain ways we appreciate it because we can do this and now we can get on here and speak to some people who are just completely devastated when they do get to these videos and we can help them understand that the the, the government's not going to help you 
There's abs- there's not going to be any help from them. They have no intentions of helping you. We have got to help each other. This is how we're going to get through this. We have to prove ourselves to lock arms and be much stronger than them. Now, what have they done to make sure that we are not able to lock arms? They have infiltrated our families, our communities, our cities. They've gotten us really against each other when it comes to belief systems, to religious systems, to, you know, certain doctrines. And we really have to set that down at this point. We really do. And there's people who are trying to figure out where is the safest place to be in this world? Where is it safest? And and like Mike said, it's in your heart because really, obviously, People are just kind of changing seats on the Titanic. The whole darn thing is going to have a problem, whether it's tornadoes, whether it's hurricanes, whether it's flooding, whether it's, you know, this, whether it's that. There's going to be a problem everywhere. That's why we have to make home as safe as possible for ourselves. I'm not saying not to move. If you're getting a nudge to move and you have the means, by all means, move. But when we see people say, um, that, well, high ground is here and, and high ground and this is safe and that's safe. Just use your own intuition. Follow your heart. Look to see where is it best for you. Just follow your own intuition. That's probably the safest thing to do. And go within and send out support to everyone else when you can. We, we have to walk through this together. Susan Donahue, thank you for your support. And everyone else, thank you for your support. Because we are going to blast this bullhorn. So as you see here, $2.4 billion aid for Ukraine. Uh, no more for Hurricane Helene. And I thunk, I think I thought I saw 8.7 for Israel. $8.7 billion for Israel. And are you going to see that type of money go into helping North Carolina or Florida? No, you won't. Um, you know you won't. We, we, we just don't. And 567 to uh, send to Taiwan, 567 million for defense assistance for Taiwan. This just happened today. You know, this, this, here you go. What could you do with 567 million to rebuild Asheville um, or to, again, maybe do things for fortifications to ride through these times. You have to recognize this is very purposeful because the system doesn't spend a lot of money helping people. It really doesn't. It spends a lot of money hurting people. It, and when you talk about defense, that defense is usually offense, and it's all off offensively used uh, against humanity and all the other creatures on the planet. The illusion of these national boundaries. Again, Ukraine didn't exist when I was born as an independent country. Uh, Israel didn't exist as an independent country when my mom and dad were born. And, you know, we could go back to Taiwan. Taiwan was, again, when Chiang Kai-shek uh, and, and the nationalists escaped in that horrible, um, bloody revolution w with the communists. And, and all these labels are just labels. You know, these, every single one of these things is created by this system. They, they create a capitalistic mindset in some people, a communistic mindset in others. And they set them off against each other. You know, they, they foster the right to hate the left. They foster the left to hate the right. Uh, obviously, you know, who, who could possibly like Biden-Harris? I don't know. But at the same time, uh, maybe there was no presidency I, I couldn't stand worse than the Bush presidency because I knew what was going on. And this was a key period in time when they were installing a lot of their... Um, you know, security, quote unquote, parameters to watch the average person who has no intention of harming anybody. This is the reality. The ones that harm and have purposeful intention to harm people is the leadership of the world. Um, you know, this is so the land. And I, we've been following these people because um, we when Cindy and I did get together, I was living in the greater Asheville area. And in fact, you know, at that point in time, because I never know when the guides are going to send me somewhere. <laughs> I, I just get this. 
and I just listened to it. I've listened to it um, for, you know, all my life post 2001 and 9-11 is I've when when 9-11 hit something went off in my mind and it said you know what's coming is is a period where you might sink roots but those roots might only last three to five years they might last you know this is the period we're in when you have these big redos uh it's Asheville today it, it could be Nashville tomorrow it could be Santa Fe uh, next week. It could be Seattle. We don't know. It, it all depends. And, and there's going to be different things that are hitting us. Um, we did get a message from um, our uh, friend David Dubine. Again, DAP2030. David and, and us, we've been friends since you know North Carolina, actually since Florida. Uh, even, you know, so, you know, and at one point in time, we were thinking about being together uh, in one location. Um, so, you know, he is in uh, a very eastern part of Tennessee. Uh, he's very close to the North Carolina border. He's doing okay. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that are not doing okay. Um, so we're really concerned and worried about a lot of people because, you know, this kind of is, if I had to say what feels like home to me in my heart, it's the Carolinas, you know, it really does. But, you know, here we are, um, we are rooting a little bit farther west, but it's with the knowledge that we might not be able to stay here the rest of our lives. We, we know this because this time is going to be challenging. And, you know, you, you, you could achieve everything that you wanted to. I mean, when you look at these guys, um, beautiful people, and he has um, overcome cancer. And I remember him going through the cancer. And what did he do? He actually went carnivore um, because he understood sugar um, feeds the cancer. And these two are, are lovely human beings. They are really good human beings. Uh, and, you know, they, they had an acre and a half they were farming, and we would drive by that area to see um, a friend. And then they got 20-ish acres, and, yeah, they have some, some serious damage. Water was coming into the house, but, but their house is standing, and it's nothing that can't be repaired. Um, and when it hit me, too, about this area, and I'm sorry, I just talked so much, um, because it does wind us up. I mean, you get attached to people. I know, you know, we're attached to you guys and you guys are attached to us. And, and it's a beautiful thing. It becomes an extended family. I remember when the Hollers here, who are also, you know, these, these are all in, in North Carolina, the Hollers. I remember when they chose where they were going to stay. I was in this area and, you know, it's, I felt like I won the uh lottery when they announced because they actually went to 47 or 48 states to actually feel the frequency and the vibe in each of the states um to decide which one are we going to homestead in they left california like so many and you know i was so excited when they chose the greater Asheville area um you know because it's like it just felt like it was a, a lottery and uh, they got damaged too, but they're okay. And, you know, these are homesteaders that are showing us how to live off the land, how to be self-sufficient. When you look to Justin Rote, he he's perhaps the biggest, over a million, 1.09 million subscribers. This was his last video, five days till Hur Hurricane Helene. Um, people that know them, um, you know, put in the comments that the family is safe. Um, however, uh, the lower, lower farm destroyed, lost bees, turkeys, high tunnel, lower pasture, lower gardens, the bridge came within feet of the house, no power for weeks. Um, they're having a hard time posting. Um, you know, the, the, everybody, this is, this is kind of like, this is one of the center places in our country for homesteading. Wow, you know, this is Perma Pastures Farm. They're okay. Ashel's destroyed. And right here, he's, he's, he's got that face on because he's saying, where's all the military? Where's the National Guard? They're elsewhere because, I mean, there is some National Guard 
in Nashville and in Waynesville. But the reality is there's probably way more off in the Middle East and in other areas than here to actually help with us and our issues in the country. This is a blow to homesteading. And I wanted to get that part across. When you look at this area, I mean, we've seen farmland just wiped out. You know, this is a blow to kind of like homesteaders everywhere. Why, why was Asheville, you know, the center point of this? Um, there is also a lot of um, like ley line portals in the area. It has a unique energy to, to be sure. Uh, well, there there is also some mention of uh, lithium underneath underneath uh, Asheville as well. So we know that there this is very purposeful, and these plans are very well laid. These plans are done very far in advance, and if you're dealing with natural cycles, I can see where you can utilize that to a degree and piggyback those natural cycles to cause more devastation but i i feel this was so strange because before helena hit i kept seeing and i can't explain it still uh, it was like a metal ball there was a metal ball over the eye of the hurricane and i did not understand it and and i'm wondering you know was that something that they're using to you know pump energy into that hurricane so that it causes more damage but you know this water this water that's coming in so far inland what's going on here you know is this coming from inner earth yes the technology has ways to bring water from anywhere it wants to they they understand these things they keep these technologies from us so that we're going to think oh it's mother earth no it is not it's these controllers that you see on the tv that are controlling the finances they're controlling the movement of the military they're controlling they're the ones who are saying who lives and dies they are playing god just like they play god in the bible they play god and they create these devastating situations for people so much unnecessary suffrage and what 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 are people supposed to do what are they supposed to do when you go and you your generator runs out of gas and you run out of water and literally there is no more water left what do you do if you have a two-year-old and a three-year-old at home and they're starving and you have a can of peas and water all around you what do you do you know, so many people were relying on some help and all the help is not here because they sent it away. They sent it away because they knew what they were doing with this. And this is just so darn evil. And I think the more energy we can send to dissolve these controllers, the better off the rest of us will be. Um, of course, we never believe in causing harm like physical harm to anyone but boy oh boy this is enough to just really upset anyone when you see how deep these roots go and how deliberate this is it's just it's really hard to sit with that and not just shake with anger yeah when you see like this from the uh, north carolina department of transportation where it says western north carolina which is a big area yeah north carolina is a pretty big state all roads are considered closed all roads in Western, you know, North Carolina are considered closed. Um, I saw um, in one post where they were saying, you know, the area that's impacted is as big as the entire state of um, Massachusetts. It's like the entire state of Massachusetts has basically been blasted to the point where it's just unrecognizable. And this was the article um, that was quoting a thousand people reportedly unaccounted for in North Carolina County, just one county, um, you know, the Chimney Rock area. Again, it's just insane. You know, this this was so big. And I think back and I, I do get um, really irritated sometimes when I see people saying, uh, as the video that we did right before this hit, um, you know, there was one comment saying, you know, you're just posting fear bait. Do you think, you know, I mean, how dense can you be? It, some people are, are extremely dense, you know, just, it's just, there's these words that get implanted in people's minds and, and that's all they know how to do is just parrot it, you know, and everything from fake news to, 
clickbait and fear, you know, fear baiting, etc. You know, it, it's it's just monkey see, monkey do, but no real thinking for yourself, no real feeling into things for yourself. And it is, unfortunately, part of what's been cultivated by the system is, again, they, they want just a, a bunch of unintelligent slaves to run things. And this is really, really sad. Not really to run things, just to take orders. And this is the last image here you can see um, of this family up on their roofs. And you know, how many people in this area ever thought we're going to have to be up on our roofs for flooding? Because this is an area with a lot of um, steep steep uh, drop-offs and twisting roads and I mean it's it's not an area where you would yeah, it's not a flat plain where you would see you know massive inundation swamping things uh, the roof did collapse causing them and their six-year-old grandchild to drown you know this is just horrible this is um, it's so horrible what we've seen and was so unexpected i think for the people in the area this whole family is lost we don't know if they're okay or not um you know this is it's just so sad uh the miller family from Asheville, floodwaters were rising up to their home and nobody's heard from them obviously there's a, a lot of people that we're just not going to know for weeks and the sad fact is, you know, in some cases you might not ever know as, you know, this was, somebody said this was an inland Katrina. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and you might think, you know, right on the coast of Louisiana, it's one thing, but here up in the mountains, you wouldn't, you know, expect this. Uh, and that's, I think, what what led to so much of the devastation. This is Augusta, Georgia, which is again um, Augusta is famous for the for the golfing tournament and all. Uh, people stranded on the roads, no no food, water, or gas. It's starting to feel apocalyptic. Uh, yeah, I mean this this does feel actually. I mean this. <sighs> I, you know, this is probably where they filmed, um, what you call it, The Walking Dead. Some of the scenes from The Walking Dead were filmed in northern Georgia, again, around Atlanta. Atlanta is a little bit away from Augusta, um, but again, you go through 20 to get from uh, Augusta uh, to Columbia or the other way to Atlanta. Whew. And then you have the you know the plant fire the chemical plant fire my goodness the the, the smoke uh, is just was just massive where is fema where's the national guard you know where is where is the priorities in this world a lot of people probably don't realize just how horribly hit this was Asheville had a hundred thousand people in it um you know it it was a good sized town city and it was its own um, entity, kind of isolated, small towns around there. Uh, again, I was living in Clyde at the time. And, you know, Clyde, I was looking at where I was. That, that seems to be high and dry. But certainly most of the area is not. 2.5 million people without power still in the southeast. Uh, over 200 people have been rescued by helicopters. And yet so much of our, our priority is all in the death and destruction abroad. And yet we have clear need here. And we could certainly use all those uh, troops that are stationed elsewhere, making profit for the military industrial con complex back here. So, you know, this, this is a list of a lot of the uh, towns and areas there that have been impacted it's so huge and it is one of the most beautiful regions uh in in the country um absolutely and it's loaded with beautiful people uh part of it that is so wonderful is the friendliness and like the little town of waynesville that we would go into we would go into waynesville more than nashville um just because it was smaller and and cleaner you know this this is just uh, such a tragedy 
And uh, as Jack Pasivic says, only 500 troops for all of Western North Carolina? Yeah, because we're sending thousands abroad. 101st Combat Aviation Brigade prepares for a nine-month mission in Middle East. This is from the 23rd, so this is from a week ago. 1,900 soldiers. Now, this is coming from uh, Kentucky, Tennessee area. They're going to the Middle East. Well, you know, how about stopping that and, and you know, instead deploy them here? They won't. Tennessee National Guard Task Force deployed to the Middle East. Another 700 going out there. They could be used here, but they're not going to do that. When you look at this Pat for SWA, uh, as I've said multiple times, that's been deployed in the Middle East. It's National Guard. It's been deployed in the Middle East since 9-11. Wait a minute. We were supposedly attacked at home, and you're, what you do is you send people abroad to the Middle East you know, where's the logic there? Oh, well, you know, they're going to take care of them before they get here. Well, by the way, there's there's tens of millions of people illegally in the country right now. And even if it's a small percentage, you know, we have we have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of sleeper cells, you know, being wait, you know, waiting to be activated still. This is a big reveal for um, humanity. And it's really a big reveal for a lot of people that thought the government was going to take care of them. Well, rude awakening. Yeah, price gouging going on. $10 a gallon for gas. If you could find it, it you know, this is in Augusta again. You're going to have people that are going to become saints, and you're going to have people that are going to take advantage of the situation. This is going to really show where people's true colors are. It, it will. I mean, it's going to draw more lines um, between people. And I think we need to decide, you know, what, what where are we going to stand? Where are we going to stand with our hearts, our morals? Um, and there's going to be a lot of dilemmas. There's going to be a lot of villains. There's going to be a lot of heroes. What do you want to be? You know, we have to decide that. And because we're going to be faced with some really horrific stuff. I mean, I just cannot stop thinking about all the people that are trapped with children animals and there's no food and they're they just they were not ready they just simply were not ready it's not a crime to not be ready there's nothing wrong with not being ready but darn it there's not going to be any help so you really have to decide and choose for yourself you know stock up for yourself and a little bit extra for for someone else or something else don't forget your pets i mean i just the visions that are going through my head are absolutely horrible. They're absolutely horrible. We've just, we're skimming the surface and, and I hate seeing what I see, but, but it is what it is. So I just, I'm processing through it and it, it is, it is creating a lot of frustration. And what do you do with that frustration? Well, you send it out and you send it out, you send that energy out for help to help people. There's ways you can use your anger to help. You know, you don't have to let it go within and then destroy yourself or destroy your family members. You don't take it out on family members or yourself for that matter. You utilize it and you direct it because it's some of the most powerful energy that we have right now. So many of us cannot just simply hop in a vehicle and go out and help, you know, but there are other things that we can do. So, I mean, this is just one more step, making it that much more obvious what their what their plans for us are. <clears throat> and no, we're not fear mongering. No, we're not just, you know, sticking a tag out there just to get views. This is the whole reason why we do what we do to try to put a buffer against how many people are going to get hurt. Because if we keep the word out there and if we catch somebody's ear and they say, hey, maybe I need to order 100 pounds of rice. Maybe we saved a whole family. We are doing everything we can on this end. And it's obviously not fear mongering. No. And yet you have this, you have this person saying, uh, that this is basically climate change. You know, again, it, you th they think that everybody is it just, it's a, it's a world loaded with morons. Uh, the reality is, no, not everybody is, is, is that dense. Not everybody has drinking all that fluoride, Kool-Aid. And it's pretty obvious, you know, the manufactured conditions that we see uh, to many people and in fact we we are a world going in two different directions you have those those people now that are are definitely clearing up detoxifying uh, sobering up getting off of um, 
anything that can lower their frequency vibration or their ability to think clearly. And then you have those other ones that are, are, are getting even more mind numbed. You know, this is really more than coincidental. The last hurricane, Helene, 1958, you know, 66 years ago, same, same path, same region, same category, same wind speeds pretty much. Uh, on the same day, you know, it's just, it, do you think it's just a coincidence? No, these redos have never stopped. They've been going on for thousands of years. Just like when people cite Matthew 24, rumor, wars and rumors of wars, you know, just do a little search and you'll see there's never a time period without war in the last 6,000 years. So that applies all the time. Look to nature. When you see bears 100 feet up a tree, <laughs> oh, uh, something good uh, is, is, is not coming this way. No, something wicked this way comes. Absolutely. Look at the bears up there. Look to nature. Feel into it. Listen to the elementals. Uh, this is, again, part of the thing that absolutely will drive us kind of crazy is, you know, people have been taught in a fundamentalist mindset to don't trust your instincts. Don't listen to the little voice. Just listen to the Pope. Listen to the sickle makers. Listen to the politicians. You know, that's insanity. Listening to, to any of these demons that are really demons. No, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of Mother Nature. Mother Nature is going to give you warning signs. She's going to tell you. When things happen like this, you know, the this is different. This is very, very different. Mm -hmm. I mean, these these creatures have very strong intuition. The the birds, all the the you know creatures that crawl around the planet. These beings, um, these pets, we call them pets. Well, they have the same consciousness within them is within us, and they play together, they work together, they figure things out, even though they do not talk. And, and sometimes with humans, it might be a good idea to just sometimes not talk and, and just do and, and figure things out. And, and I could absolutely see Rama doing this. He'd be like, oh, great, I don't have to grab dad. I could just play with the dolphin. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we look forward to your comments. Please do like, share, subscribe. Let's, you know, wake in as many as we can, prepare as many as we can. Because again, you know, this is a time period of big change and the system is being revealed for what it is for those that have the ability to actually see it. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.